Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we are going to be looking at the console jamaizer project again. Um, we have new prototypes. <clears throat> There's one. It's hooked up to my cabinet right now. Um, first of all, let's go through and explain what this project is again real quick. Um, so, this right here is the current, is the most current uh, physical prototype that I have. And uh, what this device does is it takes an RGB SCART input and controller inputs via, uh, well, basically it was intended for the Brook Retro board, uh, but it also works with PS360 Plus uh, boards, Brook Universal Fighting boards, anything that uses that standard 20 pin header will work there. And then also, of course, my custom MC Cthulhu board which I made just for this purpose which there's one right there um, and it's basically just a, a board that takes the MC Cthulhu chip uh, and converts it into something that has a 20 pin header um, but this board uh, now contains active video amplification circuitry so it'll work on 15 kilohertz uh, high impedance arcade monitors. You got the THS7375 uh, with uh, AC biasing to um, on the input to uh, allow for a fully DC coupled output so there shouldn't be any kind of fluctuations in brightness or anything like that on any monitors. Um, then you've also got an LM1881 sync stripper uh, which will handle stripping uh, composite sync out of composite video or Luma depending on what console you've got connected here. And then over here we have an LM386 based uh, mono sound amplifier to provide audio uh, to the speaker pin of the JAMA Edge. Um, that's pretty much the main functionality. Now over here you have the option to uh, do stereo audio out if you have a cabinet that's wired for stereo, um, as mine is. And then you also have uh, volume control through a potentiometer here. There's also the option to turn JAMA audio on or off. So if you are not going to be using the mono audio from JAMA, from the JAMA Edge, you can actually completely turn that off and not have to worry about it. Um, down here at the bottom, uh, you have a kick harness, a CPS2 kick harness. That's to provide the extra kick uh, buttons, so you can use it with six button controls. And um, it has buttons one through five wired to the JAMA edge for player one and player two and button six also is able to be added to the JAMA edge for anybody who has a JAMA compatible uh, wiring loom in their cabinet uh, in case you have it set up to be able to run those Chinese uh, Pandora's box or something like that then you can eliminate the need for a a kick harness if your cabinet's wired that way by sim simply turning button six on the JAMA edge Otherwise, you turn it off because most cabinets would have that wired to ground, which would tell the PCB, the controller PCB, that it's the button's pressed all the time. So keep that turned off unless you have a cabinet that's wired for Chama. Uh, and then uh, otherwise, there you go. Um, so that's pretty much the entire rundown of features. There is a more up-to-date revision of the board that I am working on in my uh, board design software right now. Um, and this... It represents electrically uh, the final product, but there are more. Uh, there are some layout changes and some added features to the newer version of the board. So that's probably going to be the final version, the one I'm working on right now. I doubt that I'll need to do another revision after this. Um, but this is the second to final, and functionally does everything that the final version will. So let's demonstrate it in action. We've got it hooked up down there to the Jamifier and we've got two controller PCBs plugged into it and we've got those run over to my PlayStation 1. So let's fire it up. <clears throat> and we're running a PSIO so that'll take a second to get into the menu. <clears throat> and 
And let's shut this light off, maybe get a better view here. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's just load up Tekken 3. And I'll try my very best to show you the controls. <clears throat> okay. So there you go. There's some some punches, some some kicks. Player two. And that's that's pretty much it. So I know, super exciting. Um, so with this uh, controller setup, this would be compatible with uh, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, um, Super Nintendo, Sega Saturn, uh, NES, uh, if you got an RGB modded NES, um, Turbo Graphics, uh, 16, uh, probably others, I can't think of them right now. Um, of course, if you ran like a PS3, um, if you could, if you got like a RGB setup for a PS3, which I understand is possible to do, uh, and you can run 640 by 480 RGB, you should be able to run that through this on any kind of um, 31 kilohertz monitors that support 31 kilohertz through their high impedance input. Um, but yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. It's um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty much finished, and uh, this is a very good way to hook up your consoles uh, to your uh, arcade cabinets. Um, it is very close to being a finished product. It's ready to go, uh, and I've been posting about it on the Arcade Projects forum. I'll leave a link to the development thread here. Uh, but soon we will probably be looking at uh, doing some doing some uh, interest checks for. For production, um, this uh, I'd like to bring this into full production. Um, it is an open source project as well, so if you are inclined to get it made yourself, it is a pretty large size PCB, so it's not super cheap to do in low quantities. But uh, if it's something you're interested in doing yourself, uh, you can do that as well. But keep an eye on the uh, Arcade Projects forum if you're interested, uh, because as soon as I am ready to go into full production with the final board, uh, it'll be available there. Uh, well, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, leave them in the comments. Later.